play, then why doesn't he start? No, Matt, I, I think Man United are, are showing, they're not, they're just showing disrespect to Ronaldo. I think he should have been let go before the transfer window. I think the manager holding on to him. Okay, you say you need options, but you don't, you don't hold on to Ronaldo to so sit in the bench. He's one of the greatest players ever. He had options. This idea that he'd no options is rubbish. He did have options, four or five very good options to keep him. Okay, today the manager, he brought Martial and he scored two, so yeah, that's justified. But generally speaking, the bigger picture, he's not going to play Ronaldo. We know that. He's played in one or two European games. It's just going to get uglier as the season goes on. Okay, Ronaldo's motivated with the World Cup coming up in your hook. But if he's sitting on the bench for Man United week in, week out, it's not good. It's just going to get ugly. And I think United have shown nothing but disrespect to Ronaldo. They should have let him go when the op op opportunity came. And as I said, he did have options to go. I know that for a fact. And holding him on to him to sit on the bench, I think it's ridiculous for, for a player of his stature, Man United, to just keep... Even today, okay, could he have brought him on? Of course he could have brought him on. So what if you're 4-0 down? You look at his you look at his goals record, is as good a chance of anyone putting the ball in the back of the net. People are obsessed with the pressing side of the game. You put the ball in the right areas, he'll score goals. Roy Keane there speaking about Cristiano Ronaldo after Manchester United's six three defeat against City this week. The conversation around Cristiano Ronaldo I've witnessed it. It seems to be one of the most divisive subjects that I've seen among United fans for a long, long time. I really do. And in this video, I want to sort of react to that video. We will listen there to what Roy Keane's had to say. And I want to try and chronologically explain how my opinion of Ronaldo has been changing over the last six months. And I want to run through that because I've been getting pelters from a lot of people about my stance on Ronaldo. And I think Roy Keane's wrong in the idea that Manchester United are showing nothing but total disrespect to Cristiano Ronaldo. This is definitely... A two-way street and the, I think the way that Roy Keane's speaking about it, Ronaldo there kind of making it all sound like it's in one direction Ronaldo last year he was a shining light in an absolutely dismal season 23-24 goals he was scoring goals in, in, a, in a team which gave him little to no service and he deserves a lot of credit for that at the end of that season I genuinely, I would not have begrudged Ronaldo if he had tried to leave Manchester United. But he didn't. And then he did. And this is where, for me, I want to try, I want to run through this now. I've, I've tried to do as much research as possible because I don't just want to jump in with it and just like go with a shotgun and go at Roy Keane for his comments. I want to try and explain exactly why my standpoint is where it is. And of course, this happened on the 2nd of July. Cristiano Ronaldo, Duncan Castle's coming out with a story. I dismissed it as sort of like guff at the time, but it, it, it transpired. That was exactly what happened. Ronaldo asked Manchester United to leave. And at that point in time, there wasn't really... We, we know that um, Jorge Mendes met with Todd Bowley, Chelsea's new owner, to discuss a potential move to Chelsea. That never materialised. Uh, Bayern Munich distanced themselves from Ronaldo, despite the fact that Lewandowski was leaving and left to join Barcelona. At Juventus, they distanced themselves because of financial reasons. And all these clubs, one by one by one by one by one, sort of dropped out. Roy Keane there in the video at the start, he's sort of saying that he knows that there were tons of other options for a fact. The only option we know that came through was Saudi Arabia's Al-Halal. We know that was uh, an offer that was on the table for Ronaldo, but the idea that, that Ten Hag kept him at the club just to hold on to him, I think that's a bit disingenuous to the truth of the idea that the offer wasn't on the table there for Ronaldo. And I think if it was, he would have left. And we're going to have that conversation again come January. But Ronaldo put in that, whether it was an official transfer request, he put, in an, he put in an intention to leave Manchester United. And of course, he wasn't part of pre-season training because he was given indefinite leave by Manchester United after missing that pre-season training for family reasons, which again, we, we are still not privy to what those were. We're going to have to believe that they were there for genuine reasons and of course Ronaldo lost his child last year uh, and I can't even imagine the amount of heartbreak and turmoil that that would cause Ronaldo was back playing for United a few weeks later which took everybody by surprise but maybe that had longer lingering in I'm sure it would not be a surprise if it did have a longer impact on Ronaldo than we ever thought and then the questions came around about whether or not Ronaldo would be joining Manchester United on the pre-season tour and a few days later, we had confirmation that he was not on the preseason tour. And then when we were out in preseason, I think Ten Hag did pretty well to cope with this. Sort of 
every single press conference, if you've watched, I remember following the preseason. What's happened with Ronaldo? No update. What's happened here? No update. What's that? No update. I don't want to talk about Ronaldo. There's nothing to talk about. Whilst at the same time, and in the UK, the press was constant speculation about Ronaldo. What's going on? Will he play? Won't he play? Will he stay? Won't he stay? Constant speculation. And then when we came back from our preseason tour of Australia and Thailand, Ronaldo on Instagram revealed that he was going to be playing against Real Vallecano. The, the first go game for Ten Hag at Old Trafford. The first time that we saw Cristiano Ronaldo play under Eric Ten Hag. But it wasn't the performance that we were speaking about after the game. And if you want to talk about respect, this is where respect is a two-way street. You remember those photos of Ronaldo leaving Old Trafford early. And as soon as it happened... Tons of people jumped to, ah, oh, Ronaldo was allowed to leave early. Ronaldo, he was, he was starting his recovery early. Ah, oh, stop having a go at Ronaldo. He wasn't allowed to leave early. And three or four days away from Eric Ten Hag's first Premier League game, the biggest name in his squad massively undermined the work that he was trying to do to build this new look control that he had. It was a... It, you want to talk about a lack of respect. That's a huge lack of respect shown from Ronaldo to Ten Hag by doing it. I don't think he probably did it in a malicious sort of way. But he did not have permission to leave. And I remembered that. And I still remembered that. Now, of course, Ronaldo said this, was it just a couple of weeks into the season? About the fact that the truth was going to come out in this interview. He was accusing the media of constant lies and speculation around him. And it clearly felt like he wanted to defend himself at this particular moment in time. We haven't heard anything else from that. And that was nearly two months ago there. But that there, this was pretty much the last thing that happened before the season started. And we didn't know what was going to go on. Whether Ronaldo was going to feature for Eric Ten Hag or not. Okay, let's see what goes on. He was left off on the bench for our opening game against Brighton. But he came off it in the 53rd minute. We lost 2-1. What happened next? We played Brentford. We lost 4-0 and Ronaldo was in that starting 11. So Eric Ten Hag has gone from this situation where, I'll be honest, he had every single right to leave Ronaldo completely out of the squad as a consequence of that in a, in a disciplinary fashion. He didn't. He came off the bench against Brighton, started against Brentford. We lost both of those games. Now, the consequence of that was that Ronaldo was dropped. So was Maguire and so was Luke Shaw. And we know what happened then. Four games on the spin, Manchester United winning in the Premier League. Fast forward to the game against City on Sunday, we lose 6-3, and now all of a sudden we're having a conversation about Ronaldo again. Now, I believe this is sort of partly in due to the fact that Eric Ten Hag said that he didn't bring Ronaldo on out of respect because we were 6-1 down. He brought Martial on, who's a man who's trying to come recover from fitness, and he scored two goals. It shouldn't have been a conversation. In the slightest. It should not have been a conversation. I guarantee you, if Ronaldo was brought on at that point, and then we ended up losing, I don't know, hypothetical here. We lost 7-1. We didn't score a goal. There'd be conversations about how disrespectful it was for Ten Hag to bring on a player like Ronaldo when we're losing 6-1 away to City. It would have been spun the other direction. This Ronaldo situation is such a looming cloud over Eric Ten Hag. He's not the future of Manchester United. Once upon a time, he was. But Ronaldo... Cares about Ronaldo first and foremost, as everybody should in life. Look after number one, right? He is trying to do what is best for himself. And he has done. And that mentality and ego is what has made him one of the greatest players we'll ever see. One of the greatest goal scorers there will ever be. If not the greatest goal scorer, there will ever be. But Ronaldo now, again, he's going to be pushing for a move away from Manchester United in January. He is not the future of our club. I don't even think he was ever in the plan or Ole Gunnar Solskjaer either. You might disagree with that, but I think that was kind of abundantly obvious kind of given what happened. But still, he banged in the goals because he is Cristiano Ronaldo. But Eric Ten Hag is trying to build something here. And if Ronaldo was a bit younger, I think Ronaldo would be absolutely part of that conversation. But he's not. And that is why Eric Ten Hag is leaving him on the bench. He's not part of this future of Manchester United. He made it abundantly clear during the summer that he wanted to leave Manchester United, that he will continue to push for a move away from Manchester United in January. 
But I don't really understand how or why Roy Keane is saying here that it's massively, totally disrespectful of Manchester United and Eric Ten Hag to leave Ronaldo on the bench. Ronaldo's not been good enough this season. He's been, he, he has been, uh, for, uh, for, by his own standards that he sets, he's, he's been a shadow himself. It's almost, almost like he didn't have a preseason. It's almost like he's 37 and his legs are catching up with his, his mentality might still be at its peak, but his legs and his body are just, a, they're a little, they're a little bit behind now. Because it's, that's exactly what's happening. And this idea now that, that, that Ten Hag is disrespecting Ronaldo by leaving him on the bench against City. It's a headline that didn't need to be a headline, in my opinion. And it's a story that didn't need to be a story. Especially for the fact that Martial came off the bench and scored two. Two consolation goals. But it's odd. It's weird. I personally think that Ronaldo will leave in January. As long as, the as, long as there is the right bid for him. And I'll be honest, that's the only reason he's still at the club. Because he angled for a move away. His agent did speak to Chelsea. Did speak to everybody. And nobody was willing to pay the wages. That would have seen Ronaldo leave the club. It wasn't the fact that Eric Ten Hag held on to him against his will. Or something like that's kind of the, in the insinuation here from uh, from Roy Keane. Just find it odd, find it strange, and I find it sad. I really genuinely find it sad that we're sitting here w watching watching the one of the greats of the game sort of fade away into the background. What happens? You know, the, the, the old guard goes out and the new generation comes in, Erling Haaland and Kylian Mbappe. They're there to take the Ballon d'Ors now. Not Ronaldo and Messi. They've had their generation. They've had their moments in the spotlight. Deservedly so. But I just so disagree with the idea that Eric Ten Hag is showing total disrespect to Cristiano Ronaldo. As I said, arcing back to that point there, I think respect is something that goes in two directions. And I don't particularly think that Eric Ten Hag has forgotten that Ronaldo did that less than a week before his first game as Manchester United manager in the Premier League. It's such a... Divisive is the wrong word, but it feels like a delicate situation to speak about Ronaldo. I just wanted to do this video on it. You can let me know what you think in the comments below. I disagree with Roy Keane and the idea that Ten Hag showing disrespect. I think Ten Hag is just managing his squad how he feels it is best. Because he's got United's best intentions at heart. Because he's our manager. So do I. So should you.